of a quick one, this one. Uh, it's just an introduction to some direct proportion. And it's kind of based on what you've done just before, hopefully. Um, sort of things like this. So one kilo of apple co apples cost 40 pence. Um, and we've been hopefully working on some stuff where we might go, okay, in which case, you know, what's five kilos of apples or what's 10 kilos of apples? Well, let's sort of fill up this table and I'll sort of show you what I mean. Because this is a little bit more of what direct proportion often looks like. So let's say we've got a table and across the top we're putting the weight of the amount of apples and underneath I'm going to put how much each of those weights would cost. So for example, uh, in pence this is, so one kilo of apples, it already says, costs 40 pence. I'm not going to put the P in like for pence because it says so here. And so two would be two lots. I, you know, I need to times it by 40, don't I? Two lots of 40 is 80. In fact, this was one lot of 40, one times 40. Uh, this would be four lots of 40. So each time, I'm actually just going to times it by 40 because every kilo of apples, one kilo, costs 40 pence, right? So five lots of 40 pence, 200 pence, so two pounds. And this works for all the, you know, decimals as well. You know, 6.5 times by 40 would be, I could probably work that out in my head if I wanted to, but I'm just going to make sure and use my calculator. Um, it's 260. Why, why didn't I just do that in my head? It's because I panic. And then eight lots of 40 pence. You know, all of these, basically, all we need to do is times it by 40, right? So which is probably why you're thinking, well, why are you telling me this? This is obvious. But it's more what we end up with. So if we look at this table, I've got a, a two variables. I've got the weight, that's one variable, and I've got the cost, that's another. But they're linked, aren't they? They're actually, in this case, we say that these quantities are in direct proportion. And that's because it's the same like multiplier that's taking us from the weight to the cost. You know, the cost is always 40 times the weight. 1 times 40, 2 times 40, and at this end, 10 times 40, right? That's why they're in direct proportion. So if we have the same sort of multiplier that takes us from one variable to the next, so in this case, the top row, if you times it by 40, you get the bottom row, then they are in direct proportion. Right, so that's what we want to do. Now, this is the sort of question we're going to work towards. You'll do a lot more work on direct proportion in the future, no doubt. But for now, all we're going to talk about is just whether two sets of variables are in direct proportion. So let's say if I put in some uh, numbers here, um, and we're going to have a little look and see, decide if they are in direct proportion. All right. There we go. So there's my question, and it says, you know, um, show whether these variables, x and y, are in direct proportion. Now, all I need to show is that there's the same multiplier taking us from, say, the top row to the bottom row, so from the x values to the y values. Notice now we haven't got a specific thing here. It's not saying weight of apples or cost of apples. It's literally just kind of very, what would say, abstract. It doesn't really mean anything. It's just x is the top row, y is the bottom row. And here's how we do it. We divide each y value by its x value. So for example, we'll take each pair, like this pair here, and we'll take the bottom value and divide it by the top one and see what number I get. Six, right? So we have to do one times by six to get the bottom row. Um, we'll do that again. We'll do uh, 12, so that's the bottom row, divided by two. We'll just take the bottom row and divide it by the top one. Six again. So this one is also times by six. Now, if we keep doing that, we just need to check that every single one is times by six. If I find one that isn't, then it's not in direct proportion. And in fact, on these ones, if I do 24 divided by 4, it's also 6, so that's 6 times bigger. 60 divided by 10 is also 6, so it's 6 times bigger. 90 divided by 15 is also 6. So actually, all of these are in direct proportion. The bottom row is 6 times bigger than the top row. So that's what you need to do. I'm going to give you a few questions in a second, and that's it. You just divide each y value by its x value. To take them, they're linked in pairs. Take that second value, divide it by the first one, and just check that it is the same multiplier every time that's multiplying it up.
All right, if you, know, if you weren't sure, maybe re-listen to that again. Otherwise, move on to these questions. There's four sets of variables. Again, these aren't real things. It's not weight of something or cost of something. It's just, you know, in this case, X values and Y values, A values and B values. And just see if each set is in direct proportion, please. So show me whether each of these pairs of variables, that's just letters, are in direct proportion. So pause the video. You might want to just copy these out. Try and do the dividing, see if they're in direct proportion. I'll stop talking now and you pause the video. Okay, we've unpaused. So if you did some dividing here, if you did five divided by one, you get five, right? So that's five times bigger. 10 divided by two is also five. So that's five times bigger. Uh, 20 divided by four is five. So that is five times bigger. And in fact, I think all of these, oops, that equals five, uh, all of these are actually times by five. So this one is, yes, it is in direct proportion. And you do need to put that, so yes, it is in direct proportion. All right, about this one, let's move on to a different color to make it clear. Um, okay, take the second value, divide it by its pair, you know, it's, its partner. Four divided by one is four. Right, are all the others? Four times as big. Well, 12 divided by 3 is also 4. So that one is also t divided by 4. Uh, 20 divided by 5 is also 4. 28 divided by 7 is 4. And 36 divided by 9 is 4. These are all in direct proportion. The bottom row is four times as big as the top row. Right, next one. Another colour. Let's go for blue. Right, let's try this one. 3 divided by 1 is 3, right? So the bottom row is 3 times bigger. Let's try it with 6. 6 divided by 2 is 3, so that is 3 times bigger. In fact, do we think all of these, if I divide them, do I get 3? And it has to be all of them. You can't miss one out. Yeah, all of these are 3 times bigger until... I get to 40 divided by 12, which is, oh, it's 3.3 recurring. It's pretty nasty, actually. Right? So this one would be, no, it is not in direct proportion. Oh, I didn't write that down for my other one, for the green one, did I? This one would be, yes, it's in direct proportion. For this bottom one that I've just done is, no, it is not in direct proportion because this one is 3.3 three times as big it's not the same number all right that one lets it down they have to all be the same last one let's go to horrible magenta so take each value divide it by it's uh, it's partner you know all the h values divided by the g values you know so five divided by two is also 2.5 so both of those were 2.5 uh, 10 Divided by 4 is 2.5. Oh, it's looking good for this one so far. 12.5 divided by 5 is also... He says, just double checking. Yeah, 5. So that is... Hang on, why am I dividing it by 2.5? I did that wrong, didn't I? Mr. Nice. Get it right. Yeah, that is 2.5. Yeah. So that is 2.5. So it's all down to this last one. 20 divided by 8 is 2.5. Right, so this one is a definite yes, because the whole bottom row is two and a half times bigger than the, the top row. All right, so this one is another yes, it is in direct proportion. Okay, so as like I said, we're not going to take direct proportion any further, but, you know, at the moment, we'll do that in the future. That's just for now. That's how you find out if two variables are in direct proportion. Take them as pairs, divide one by its you know, origin. So five divided by one, 10 divided by two, and so on in the tables. All right, okay, hope that was useful. I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.